It's time for Lie Curious. Here's how Lie Curious works. I give you three biographical details about a public figure, but only one is true. You have to guess which is the truth and which are dirty, filthy, nasty, funky lies. <laughs> Let's get started. Time for three facts about NBC election guru Steve Kornacki, king of the khakis. All right. Our facts are, he didn't eat breakfast for 29 years, oh. lost his virginity behind a Kmart, <laughs> rides his bike to work every day from New Jersey. Which one is the truth? I suspect Steve Kornacki still has not lost his virginity. <laughs> Steve Kornacki is beautiful, and he's lovely, and he's smart but he does look like he rode his bike into work <laughs> from a different state. Not in them tight-ass khakis he be having on. <laughs> oh, you checking out how tight his khakis are? Don't you Arnold Palmer me. <laughs> I'm gonna go with three, rides his bike. We're gonna go with number one. Didn't eat breakfast Changing for 29 years. Changing that feels plausible to me. Steve Kornacki didn't eat breakfast oh, for oh. 29 years. Oh, oh. 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 So, so god awful to watch. So <laughs> in the days before the 2020 election, Kornacki gave an interview to GQ in which he said, quote, I haven't had breakfast in 28 or 29 years. Yep. Well, he missed a Pop Tart and a Pop Tart cereal that came out. <laughs> oh my yeah. God, he's never had a toaster strudel. Nope. Sad. Never had King Vitamin. Yeah. Holy shit! <laughs> That is... <laughs> are all your references from 1974? Yeah, <laughs> they are. Those commercials oh. weren't even in color. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for three facts about Fox News personality. How old are you, Larry? <laughs> <laughs> I just turned uh, 82. Dude. You look good. Thank you. Uh, three facts now about Fox News personality, Greg Gutfeld. Our facts are he has no toenails. He used to know every NWA song by heart. Mm. He eats dinner at Chili's once a week. <laughs> I'm gonna just say it's number one because it's just <laughs> creepy. <laughs> How would somebody not have toenails? You know, some people just have a little bit of corn of a toenail. Yeah. Oh. You ain't never seen a girl with her socks off and you'd be like, what's up with your toes? <laughs> <laughs> I think that he eats dinner at Chili's once a week yeah. is very plausible. So it makes me want to say he used to know every NWA song by heart, but you know that he would love to rap along mm -hmm. and he would love to shout that N-word real loud. <laughs> Great Gutfeld used to know every oh. NWA song by heart. Good job. Wow. As he told The Observer back in 2007, quote, I got into rap very early. I could do every NWA song by heart. Michael, bonus points. What does NWA stand for? <laughs> I'm gonna say. <laughs> Think about it, I'll come back to you, Adam. <laughs> bonus point for you, Adam. Finish this NWA lyric. <laughs> <laughs> a bitch is a... <laughs> I'm just... Uh, you know, nice lady. <laughs> uh, bonus question for everybody. Uh, while working an event as a young man, Greg Gutfeld finished off Who's Half Eaten Meal? I want it to be Kid Rock. I'm gonna guess it's somebody who had mad cow disease because that would explain Greg Gutfeld. Yeah. Greg Gutfeld once ate Ronald Reagan's leftover chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's weird. As a young intern at a conservative magazine, Gutfeld was recruited to help out one day when Reagan was visiting his boss at the house. And, quote, after Reagan left, they were clearing the dishes, and I got Reagan's dish, and he hadn't eaten all of his chicken, so I ate all of his chicken. I mean, that's the first time trickle-down economics ever worked. Yeah. <laughs> but... Sure. The only reason he ate that chicken was so that years and years later, he yep. could be like, oh, I ate Ronald Reagan's chicken. Yep. <laughs> Three facts now about <laughs> Oscar winner and national treasure Meryl Streep. Mm. Her agent suggested she change her name to Meryl Streep. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. <laughs> she requested her character in Mamma Mia 2 be killed off. She was the last person to see Steve <laughs> Irwin alive. Oh, I love that one. Oh, we want that. Oh, 
We want it to be Which three. Larry and I want that one to be it. We want it to be three so bad. She is part stingray. She did it. She was the last person to see Steve Irwin alive. I'm just going to go three. I mean, it's like, you know. It's, it's the scary. most fun. It's yeah. the most and, fun. And it was actually Steve Irwin who suggested she change her name to Merrill's. Yeah. <laughs> her agent suggested Aww. she change her name no way. to Boo. Merle Street. In a 1979 interview with the New York Times, Merrill was never self-conscious about her name, saying, quote, with Carmine Petruccione, Pancho Soigna, and Boza del Russo around the neighborhood, no one was making fun of my name, but later on, agents wanted her to change her name to Merle Street. Hmm. Mm. I love Merle Street in the Darvel Wells pasta. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> this has been Like Curious. It's time now for missing words. Captain, I'm going to give your team some recent news headlines with mm. keywords cut out, and you'll have to fill in the blank and give us the full story. You mother blankers ready? Mm -hmm. Here's your headline. Dog spotted on top of blank. Stop. Lauren Boebert. <laughs> <laughs> I like that answer. I, I mean, at some point, that's true. <laughs> Let's go with Mount Rushmore. Oh, not bad. Oh. Dog spotted on top of Great Pyramid of Giza. Oh, that's cool. A paragliders video of a stray dog frolicking on top of one of Holy ancient shit. Egypt's Great Pyramids captivated commenters on social media this week. Here's the video. Nice. Wow. Yeah, he did it. Yeah. Good for him. This is why you need leash laws. <laughs> <laughs> My dog would climb up that pyramid just to lick up another dog's vomit. His little achievement. He got all the way to the top of the pyramid. Now you gotta bring up vomit. He's a good boy. He is a, he's a good boy. Yeah. He's a real good boy. Yeah. Now, nobody knows how the dog managed to scale the 448 foot structure, but we do know how he got down. Oh my goodness, look how fast he is. Nobody knows how he got up there. <laughs> then you're showing how he came down. Mm -hmm. You can't extrapolate how he got up? We don't know. It's the pyramids. There's a lot of mysterious shit. <laughs> <laughs> you never watch Ancient Aliens? Or... Right. He's a good boy, isn't he, yeah. Amber? Yeah, he did. He's a he good boy. Right. A real good boy. Here's your next headline. Restaurant apologizes after serving <laughs> blank. Oh. <laughs> I mean, that's what you get served. You serve uh, <laughs> I feel like that might have earned our first bleep. <laughs> oh, restaurant apologizes after serving. See you next Tuesday. <laughs> restaurant apologizes after serving reenactors dressed as Nazi soldiers. Uh, <laughs> Kith and Ken restaurant in Hudson, Massachusetts apologized after allowing two people in SS officer uniforms to dine inside the restaurant, saying, quote, in hindsight, they should have been asked to change before being seated. <laughs> Like, I don't have a problem with them reenacting anything, but once you put on the SS uniform and the reenactment's over and you say, hey, do you feel like getting something to eat? I'd probably say, you know what, I am hungry, but let me just quickly take off this SS uniform <laughs> featuring the swastikas <laughs> before we get our Grand Slam breakfast. They probably were just real rude in the way that they ordered soup! <laughs> <laughs> Batten cakes! <laughs> the offensively dressed duo were part of eight living historians looking to grab a bite after participating in a World War II reenactment mm. at the American Heritage Museum. This is what I've always thought of reenactors. Mm -hmm. If you're like, I want to play the Nazi, then you like that shit. <laughs> and you want to wear that shit, and you want people to look at you while you look like that. Do you, though? Somebody got to be the Nazi. But, Roy, you have to have the uniform already. Bonus question. <laughs> Who on this panel has participated in a historical reenactment and may have been on the wrong side of history in the reenactment? Certainly not somebody from the South. Certainly not someone from this side of the melanin spectrum. And it, <laughs> I'm guessing it's not somebody who hosts a show on CNN. Uh -uh. Roll it. <laughs> if we hadn't become soldiers, the teens might have gone back as they were before. Our freedom may have passed through two houses of Congress, and President Lincoln's four years might have passed us by, and nothing been done for us. But, you know, I have to say, that character, he's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I got $200 for that shit, and y'all can kiss my ass. 
<laughs> Here's your next headline. Moron blank cyber truck, alarmed to discover it's not actually blank. Moron buys cyber truck, <laughs> alarmed to discover it's not actually good. A truck. Moron <laughs> shoots cyber truck, ah. alarmed to discover <laughs> It's not actually bulletproof. Yeah. No. This moron has a name. Oh, His man, name yeah. is not Elon Musk. Does anybody know the name of said moron? It's got to be like a like a dumb person's name, but they also have to have enough money to buy one of those. Yeah. So it's like um, it's like Cletus Vandersnoot. <laughs> so he's Dutch. <laughs> His name is Dante Cole, and he is a oh, porn cool. star. Oh, Here he good. is, seeing if his cyber truck is bulletproof. <laughs> well, at least he's getting laid. Yes, for those of you that are not familiar with Dante's work, uh, his adult <laughs> film credits include Scared Stiff 2, The Amityville Whore. <laughs> also, The Boyfriend the nutting and professor. The Nutting Professor. That makes sense. Fun fact, the sequel to The Nutting Professor is also called The Clumps. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.